सदो मान्यो सभापति जी नमस्कार जी नमस्कार जी नमस्कार जी नमस्कार जी द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन 122nd amendment bill 2014 further consideration of the motion moved by sri arun jaitli on 11th august 2015 you can honorable minister mr deputy chairman i rise to move that the bill to further amend the constitution of india as passed by the lok sabha and as reported by the select committees of the rajya sabha be taken into consideration yeah. sir just a few brief comments at the very outset and then i'll be replying to the issues raised by the honorable members in the course of the debate itself so this is uh, one of the most significant tax reforms in india in recent history this reform itself has been uh, debated within the political and economic system of india for the last uh, almost over 15 years the government had uh, in the last decade itself appointed uh, a task force headed by dr kelkar which had in 2003 first mooted this idea of a uniform goods and services tax in india based on the vat principle this was considered by the government and it was first put into public domain before the parliament in the year 2006 when it was referred to then in the budget speech of the then finance minister mr chidambaram a tentative date that it could be implemented and rolled out by 2010 was also indicated at that stage discussion paper on it was uh, released in november 2009 there was a group joint group of officers between the center and the states which was formed uh, in order to do a lot of technical uh, coordination and a formal constitution amendment was introduced along with the budget after the budget in the year 2011 itself there were two parallel tracks on which discussion on this went on the first was that the government had created an empowered committee of state finance ministers which considered the draft which was also interacting with the union government and this state empowered committee of the state finance ministers from time to time had been suggesting several changes as far as the goods and services tax uh, proposals were concerned simultaneously this had also been referred to the standing committee of the ministry of finance which in august 2013 submitted a report the report was also sent uh, to the empowered committee and again in november 2013 some suggestions were made by the empowered committee which were duly incorporated by the government at that time the revised bill finally was ready sometime towards <coughs> the early 2014 but it lapsed on account of the dissolution of the lok sabha itself in december 2014 after the change of government the cabinet again approved the amendments this was preceded by a series of discussions between the government and the members of the empowered committee and if i may recollect here that one of the contentious issues was to bring on board several states which had reservations now reservations were broadly of two categories some states felt that uh, the power to impose tax within the state for subjects in the state list was within their domain and therefore it was their exclusive jurisdiction <coughs> some manufacturing states felt that since this was intended to be based on the destination principle the consuming states would benefit more and hence there would be a loss suffered by the manufacturing states themselves 
and they wanted an adequate mechanism for their own compensation. Now, most of the states were brought on board, and the December 2014 amendments were on basis of that consensus which had been reached at that stage. That bill approved by the Empowered Committee was approved by the Lok Sabha in 2015. When it came before this Honorable House, it was then referred to a select committee. The select committee made certain suggestions, some of which have been incorporated. And thereafter, the government considered it absolutely necessary to build a larger consensus. The need for the larger consensus was that we were radically changing the taxation, proposal was to change the taxation structure as far as the country was concerned. Today, within the domain of the union government and the states, there are different categories of taxes which are imposed. These were all intended to be subsumed into the goods and services tax. Now, some, for those who felt that this was uh, surrendering their sovereignty, this was, in fact, pooling in of sovereignty of the states and the center so that we could have a system which was a far better and a more modern conducive system which would help the assessees, which would raise larger revenues and eventually give a boost to the Indian economy itself. The merits of the system itself are that uh, it would convert India into one uniform economic market with a uniform tax rate, bring about a seamless transfer of goods and services across the country, enable us to check evasion, and therefore enlarge the revenues as far as the center and the states are concerned. This would also be equitable in as much as the consuming states would also be benefited as far as their economy is concerned. Many economists and analysts believe that this would also give a boost as far as the uh, uh, growth rates in the country are concerned. It was therefore extremely important that before a bill of this kind which brings about a major change is concerned, there is a political consensus built up to the extent that it is possible. And therefore, once uh, the select committee and earlier the standing committee had made their recommendations, the empowered committee of the state finance ministers was consulted from time to time to suggest various changes and improvements on the bill. Simultaneously, a process of dialogue with all major political parties in parliament was also undertaken. And therefore, the two discussions, both in the Empowered Committee and a dialogue with the political parties, had to be balanced with each other. And the best possible outcome had to be incorporated as far as the bill is concerned. It was obvious that this exercise would take time. But I would say this has yielded effect. And uh, there has been a large consensus building which has taken place, which is absolutely necessary in a bill of this kind for the simple reason that a bill, legislation of this kind can't be based on partisan considerations. Almost every major political party in the country is a part of the power structure in some part of the country or the other, or at least it is likely to be. And therefore, since uh, this impacts across the center and the states, a larger political consensus was necessary. And therefore, we have systematically work towards that political consensus. And I'm extremely grateful to all the political parties uh, uh, whose members are present here. I am particularly grateful to Sri Gulam Nabi Azad, the, the leader of the opposition, who uh, uh, was a part of the discussions that I had along with his colleagues uh, on this subject, as also various political parties, chief ministers of uh, almost all states, leaders of all political parties whom I discussed this issue with, and uh, the empowered committee of the state finance ministers that we've been able to achieve as far as a consensus as it is possible, if not uniformity, uh, unanimity, uh, as far as the uh, language and the spirit of this legislation is concerned. So the bill seeks to subsume, and I'll answer this, uh, the, uh, I'm sure the members will reflect on this, and if there are issues raised, I'll answer it in the reply. Various taxes as far as the 
central government are concerned and the state governments are concerned into a uniform goods and services tax. As a part of the consensus, the state strongly felt that alcohol had to be kept out. Many states felt that petroleum products be kept out. So the arrangement that has been made is that alcohol is not a part, the, at least portable, consumable alcohol is not a part of the GST. Technically, petroleum products are, but they are being zero rated. They will be brought within the taxation structure only once the uh, uh, empowered committee, which will subsequently convert itself along with the union government into the GST council itself, uh, uh, gives an approval to the idea. So the whole concept of the GST council is Indian federalism at play in the best possible mode. Two-thirds of the voting power in the GST Council belongs to the states. One third of the voting power in the GST Council belongs to the center. The votes required to settle a particular issue are three-fourth. And therefore, necessarily the GST Council has to work under a particular consensus. And therefore, the center and the states will have to work together the center will have a veto on the states, the state will have a veto on the center, and therefore this will be federalism at play under which the GST council itself would be then able to take its decisions. Sir, the whole object is that after this constitution amendment is approved, ratified by the states, the council would come into existence. Subsequently, three enabling laws, two by the central parliament, and one by the state legislators would have to be passed. The two central laws would be in relation to the central GST and the interstate GST. The state legislation would be with regard to the state GST. Needless to say, the council itself would discuss the drafts of those laws. Various modalities, including what would be the taxation structures, would then be discussed with the council. The operational modes, so that there is no overlapping left as far as the functioning of the GST is concerned, and that can be smoothened out, would all be areas which will then have to be smoothened out. And hopefully, once the council approves those legislations, those legislations would be brought uh, before this honorable house. Parallelly, the uh, IT backbone, which is required to support the GST network, is also being prepared. It's at uh, reasonably advanced stages. And once uh, these proposals are carried, we'd be able to uh, put this in actual action as soon uh, as these, uh, uh, we can pass these legislations and the IT infrastructure for that is necessary. I hope this is done as quickly as we can. I am sure the enactment of the GST, as I've said earlier, will bring about uh, the best as far as uh, the economic management of this country is concerned in its federal forms. It will empower the states. It will increase the revenue of the states as also of the central government. It will try and dissuade, discourage, and bring down levels of evasion. It would ensure that there is no tax on tax. So the cascading effect of taxes in the value of goods itself is not no longer there. And that could even make some of the products uh, cost less. It would uh, uh, certainly give a boost as far as the economy is concerned, which is uh, required at this very critical stage. And I'm sure uh, as we discuss this, a large number of issues will come out as to what the eventual GST rate would be. Some suggestions were made to, to that effect. There were some suggestions made by my learned colleagues in the opposition with regard to 1% uh, additional tax on uh, interstate trade which uh, there was an alternate view that it was felt that it would have a cascading effect and would go contrary to the destination principle. Uh, 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 the leader of opposition, along with his colleagues, had made that point. We have accepted their viewpoint. There was a suggestion with regard to the rephrasing of the dispute redressal mechanism, that if there is a dispute, how the disputes are to be resolved. And we have all agreed that disputes would be resolved in the GST Council itself. And if the council can't resolve the disputes, then the council would refer the matter to an adequate dispute redressal mechanism that the council itself would set up. So that authority also has been vested into the council. 
with regard to the rate, it is the rate which is in the domain of the GST Council. But at the last meeting of the Empowered Committee, which reflects what possibly could be the intention of the GST Council, the Empowered Committee had suggested certain guiding principles for itself. And one of the two guiding principles were that the rate of the taxation as it is leviable today with the implementation of the GST will gradually come down from its present level so that it is more citizen friendly. So that's the first step that they had suggested. The second was that the taxation should be adequate enough to maintain the present levels of taxation and to make sure that the central and the state governments are able to discharge their duties and obligations to the fullest with the amounts that they collect. Now, this is the guiding principle which the empowered committee, that is the intention of the state governments that they have set for themselves. With these few observations, sir, I commend uh, the bill to this honorable house for its acceptance. When issues are raised in the course of the discussion, I'll respond to them towards the end, sir. Okay. Thank you, Honorable Finance Minister. Thank you. Now, sir.